Hi, I'm glad you could join me today. I'm in the book of Romans, chapter 5. Romans is the, some describe it as the constitution of Christianity, and if you know the uh, outline of the book of Romans, you know that Paul is uh, giving a great treatise on exactly how we as believers in Christ can find peace and hope in the blood of Christ, how the sins that we have done can be forgiven. And he talks about that in chapter 5, verse 1, where he says in a very famous verse, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. What a joy that is. And, and because of that, Paul says that we exult in the glory of God. Now, listen carefully to what he says here. It says, through him we also have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. What a great thing that is. We, we can trust and we can give great hope, have great hope because we're going to see and experience the glory and the praise and the worship of Almighty God. He himself is going to be our peace, and we rejoice in that. But I find verse 3 to be especially challenging because he says, and, and get this, more than that. As great as the glory of God will be and our rejoicing in that, he says, more than that, we rejoice in our sufferings. Now, we don't like that particular part of it. We think that, that especially those of us who have grown up in a Western culture, recognize that suffering is something that we would prefer not to have as a part of our Christian experience. And yet, Paul says, more than rejoicing in the glory of God and more than rejoicing in the fact that our sins are forgiven, we rejoice in the fact that we can suffer for him. Because when we suffer for him, we essentially are identifying with him. He is the one who suffered. He is the one who was called the man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He is the one that endured that passion to the place where he, his heart was broken over the sins of men. And he endured that. And if, we as, uh, if we're going to be his followers, we should recognize that we will experience that also. And so... Paul says that more than the glory that will be ours, we rejoice in the sufferings that we have. Because actually they're going to enhance the glory that we have in heaven. What Paul means by that is that the more that we can experience the, uh, the, the, the sufferings and the passion and the uh, being uh, like Christ in his sufferings, the more we will rejoice in heaven that way. Now, that doesn't mean that we should go out like some used to do and, and expect martyrdom and, uh, and seek martyrdom or anything of that nature. I think people were, uh, were Christians were not necessarily uh, approaching this in the right way when they, uh, when they used to seek the... Um, the, the the gladiators and the lions, uh, the lions in the arena, and all of that kind of thing, and they used to do that back in the first century. And I'm not suggesting that that's what we do. We shouldn't gain a martyr complex, but we should recognize that the sufferings that we experience help us to identify with Jesus and He with us. And because of that, we know we have a great High Priest who bears our weaknesses. He understands our infirmities, and he, and, and, and he bears them for us. That's why the psalmist says we can cast all our burdens upon him. Why Peter says cast all of your cares upon him because he cares for you. And so all we who are like sheep can put our trust in him as we experience those sufferings ourselves and find grace and peace in the midst of them. More 
than the glory that will be revealed. We rejoice in the sufferings that he's provided. Father, we ask you to grant to us the grace that we need. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness, and we pray that we will endure so that we can serve you faithfully with all of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.